Thank you.
Good morning and happy Sabbath. I invite you to stand and sing with us our welcome song, We Have Come Into This House. We have come into this house. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into this house, gathered in his name to worship Christ our Lord. Seven Ruth. <laughs> Welcome to church today. To those who are joining online and those present in the sanctuary, we are thrilled to have you worshiping the mighty, matchless name of Jesus with us today. Is there anyone visiting with us today? Those online can type it in the chat. Those who are present in the sanctuary, you can raise your hand. Amen. Psalm 122, verse 1. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Visiting friends, we are happy that you have made Ruth your choice this morning. And I pray that the blessed Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, will surely bring you back to us to worship again. To our regular members, our worship experience would not have been the same without you. We do appreciate your presence each and every Sabbath, fellowshipping one with another. Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered in his name, is there to bless and do us good. The presence of the Lord is here at Roots today. Enjoy your worship experience Welcome and thanks for being here. Our praise team will come and do our opening hymn this morning. Number 246, Worthy, Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy, Worthy is the Lamb.
pray together. Blessed Heavenly Father, thank you for breathing into our bodies the breath of life this day. Thank you for allowing us to see the first Sabbath of this second quarter, April. And we are grateful, O oh God, to be in the house of prayer and praise for all people. Accept our worship today. May your name be lifted up. May you be glorified. And may we be drawn closer to you today. And may we say it was great to be in the house of God. Come and tabernacle with us, we pray. We will be careful to give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. For we ask it all in Jesus' almighty name. Let every child of God say, Amen. Psalms 118 verse 24 say, This is the day that the Lord has made. We will. Let's repeat that part. We will. And be. That's the purpose for being here today. To rejoice. And no fake rejoicing. But sincere. Be glad in rejoicing in the house of the Lord. With your brothers and sisters. Amen. All right. Please give me a, a listening, listening ear. And I smile when I say that because my boys and I always have the conversation. I say, stop. Just, I want you to listen, not to hear. Because when you hear it, just go through one and come to the other. I want you to listen, so you pay attention. Okay, um, I have some announcements here. The Ruth Explorer Adventure Club, in celebration of mothers, will be having a Mother's Day brunch on May 12th at 11 a.m. May 12th at 11 a.m. Please pay attention to our website and our social media for all the necessary information. You can see ticket price, etc. Please support it. Our couples department of the family life also have a survey that they have put out for couples, for all couples, married couples. Please fill out the survey. They want to see what couple's needs are and how to meet the needs and to gather some other information. It's short, it is simple. Please participate. Singles Ministry will be having their spring gala, single spring gala. Last week, Pastor, Pastor Bonnick asked for all the singles, I think, to wave. It was something like that. I'm not going to ask you to wave this time, but all singles pay attention. So the single spring gala is April 28th. Um, for those who are interested, please see Brother Ricardo, Sister Yannick, and Sister Havila for tickets. And there is the information on the screen and also on the website. Now, you have heard me, you have heard Pastor and other elders talk about, or I don't know if call it a parking lot, or where we park our cars that need proper paving. Um, you have seen some things that we call pothole. And pretty soon, as the spring continues and we get more rain, those potholes are going to be transformed to something that I don't know what it's going to be, but it won't be like what it is now. So we are having a parking lot repavement um, fundraising drive. One of the drives that is being focused on right now is is a domino table tennis tournament drive. I think I put the wrong date here on my April 20th. I have the wrong date here. April 20th at 8.30 p.m. We'll have fish meal, curry and roti. I hope they'll be bus up shot. That's my favorite. So whoever is in charge of the roti, ensure you carry bus up shot as well. Please support this because this is one of the fundraising drive for a well-needed parking lot. I don't want anybody to come to me and say, Elder, because of Ruth SDA church parking lot, my front end is damaged, and we need you guys to do something. Because I'll tell you, say, well, there's nothing in the kitty, so we can't do anything. So let's support this, this venture. Tell your friends, tell your families, and let's come out and support this one. Immediately after divine, immediately after divine service, immediately after divine service, we'll be transitioning into our fasting and prayer. Every first Sabbath, every first Sabbath of the month, we have our fasting and prayer. So we're asking you, please, to support. If you're not going to be staying back to be here for fasting and prayer, I'm going to ask at the end of the divine service to just quietly 
transition out to the hall so that we can transition smoothly into the fasting and prayer. Everybody's up in tune? Yeah. Right, please, please, let's do that. So we don't disturb and we can do that smoothly. This evening, we have Bible class at 5 p.m. On Wednesdays, every Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. on Zoom, we have our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Our Wednesday night prayer meeting. And we're now looking at questions God asks us. Questions God asks us. That's what we are looking at. Pastor Mary started last Wednesday. So please invite your friends and your family to join. Also, I'd like to say for those who, for visiting friends and others, of course, if you are in need of Bible study, a one-to-one -one Bible study, please see the personal, the personal ministry department. And can members of that department just wave your hand, please? All right, there's one hand there. I don't see the rest of the team. Please see them or any of the elders, and they can direct you to um, the Bible studies. I'm going to ask you to just bear with me for a short moment. You know, it's good to celebrate. And when individuals have worked hard and they have sweat and they have been anxious and then they face the challenge and the test and come out successful, they're happy and we want to celebrate with them. We say we mourn with each other and we also what? Rejoice with each other. So today, today I'm gonna ask some individuals to come forward. I'm gonna ask um, Jalen Mason, Zahara McDonald, Zachary Fowler, Keija, Keija, forgive me, that's why I smile. I know I would have probably pronouncing your name. Brown. Ayomid. Ola Deep. Alomide. Okay. Cassidy Senior. Hannah Grace. And Peaches James. And Peaches James. Under the directorship of Sister Georgia Perry and the guidance of Sister Colleen McDonald, can you join me as well? And Sister Sophia Graham, can Sophia and Sister Colleen join us as well? Under the guidance of these two lovely ladies. So we are looking here at not the full team, but the our Pathfinder Bible Experience team. Last week, they represented our church at the national level for Bible ex Sister Perry, director, come on, uh, come director, sorry, sorry, sorry. Director, you have to be here. Director Perry, sorry, we can't leave with Director Perry. The participated in the Bible experience, and it was a national event. All the provinces were represented. And at the end of the Bible experience, Ruth team here behind me, not the full team, but the team here behind me, were among, so I have to explain, they were among those who came first. So for those who came first, they had to get past a certain threshold. So there, I think, was four teams throughout Canada that came first. But, so they are first. But also, this team got the highest score. So they are true first. You know, they are young people, and um, they have been working hard, and the coaches have been working with them. Right? And we want to encourage them. I want to continue to pray for them. So guess what? No, no, they're going to go on to uh, another level. This is the divisional level. They're going to represent Root Church at the North American Division. Do you hear me? I'm going to invite Elder, Elder Herlock. Elder Herlock. You know, last week, Elder Herlock called me 
And we know that Ella, oh, she's wearing, without the glasses, Ella, Ella. <laughs> uh, Ella, Ella just did eye surgery, right? She did on both eyes two weeks apart. And she called me last week and she said, Ella, I won't be able to come out for the morning service, but I'm definitely coming out to support the young people in the afternoon. And Ella Herlock was seated right over there in the evening while the team was here doing their quiz online. And she had on a very, very dark glasses, <laughs> right? And you know, her presence meant a lot. And I did at the time ask her to pray with them. But today in your presence, I'm gonna ask Ella Herlock to consecrate this team behind us and the leadership and also to pray for their success going forward. But before I go any further, let me just, is Brother Chambers in the congregation? Okay. All right, thank you. Ella Herla, can you please? Thanks. I just want them to be close to me because I am so so happy for how they have come out on top and the fact that young people can give up their time and their talent Amen. to study the word of God. Amen. So team, I'm going to pray for you this morning. You know what? I, I think I would like, can you give me a mic in my hand, please? I don't want to turn my back to them. I'm just going to go on the side where I can look at them, you know, I, and um, because it's fine. I'm so proud of you, you know. Okay, so I'm going to pray for you this morning that God will go with you, that you'll continue to study his word, and that you will do your best when you go to the division level. Just, just before it, Elder prays, I just want to say, insert this, that they'll be going to Colorado, Colorado, and that's two weeks time. So they'll be going to Colorado, two weeks time. Can anybody predict what I'm going to go say next? <laughs> Ella Belfon says again, they need money. So we're going to ask, we're going to ask, as the Holy Spirit bids your heart, if you may, try and see if you can support, talk to Director Perry and see how much you can support financially and also in your prayers. Let's go ahead, please. Our righteous, mighty, powerful Heavenly Father, we are so happy to be in your presence this morning where we can call on your matchless name, Lord. We are grateful for your mercies that are renewed every day. We are thankful for this building where we can come together to call upon your name and to worship you as brethren. We not only thank you for the mothers and the fathers, we want to thank you for our young people because we know that it is the young people who will carry on your work. And so, Lord, first I ask you to bless the homes that they come from and the parents who have led out and give them good examples in studying the word of God. We want to thank you for the Pathfinder Club, Lord, that club that is helping our young people to grow spiritually. We ask that you bless your leader, Elder Georgia, but, um, Sister Georgia Perry, Lord, that she would continue doing what she can. And I know she gives of her best. I see her there every week. And I pray that you continue to bless her efforts and all the other leaders that will work along with her. Please be with those who have helped to train these young people, Lord. They give up their time. They could have found something else to do, but they give up their time because they're interested in young people and they're interested in your word. So, Lord, I bring the young people individually before you. I see Jalen Mason is not here, but she's part of that team. I pray, oh Lord, that you'll continue to bless them individually. Bless them with good health. Bless them with, um, 
with, with, the, with the clarity of mind, Lord, that when they go to Colorado, that everything will just come back to them. Help them to continue to study, Lord, your word. Let your word be that lamp unto their feet and their light unto their path. That they're not only studying because uh, they want to win, but they're studying so that the word will dwell in their hearts, that they will not sin against you. So I pray that you will be with each one of them, Lord. Be with them as they travel. Father, we know there are all kinds of things that can happen, but we, add, we, we count on you that you will take them there safely. You will keep them there in safety while they're there. And the angel of the Lord will encamp around not only them, but all the other teams who will be traveling. And please, Lord, as they are there, that you will hover over the edifice where this competition is going on and that you will keep the building safe. But Lord, they are doing their part. We need to do our part because nothing happens without funding. I pray that you'll move on the hearts of every member this morning and that we will all give whatever we can because little is much when God is in it. So I pray that each one of us will give so that when they go and they do well and come back, we can all say, we had a part in this. We may not be able to go to, to, to in the competition with them, but we give up our funds so they can make it there. So continue, Lord. May your Holy Spirit rest upon each one of them. May your angels uh, continue to hover over them. May the blood of Jesus Christ that never loses his power rest upon them, Lord, and help them to continue to do what is right and what is pleasing to you. So we want to say thank you, Jesus, that they have done well and have done well and will do well again. So please be with each one of them here today and be with the homes that they come from, that they will be ready to go. No mishap at all. And that they will get their safety, do their best, and come back home for us. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering prayer today. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Um, I just want to make sure we don't forget, three of the team members are not here. Anna, Grace, um, Jalen Mason, and, Zach and Zachary Folder. They're otherwise occupied today at another church. So I just want to make sure that we mention that those three are missing today, but they'll also be with us in Colorado. So let me just be clear for those who the Spirit spoke to and you want to contribute. And for those who are online too and would like to contribute, you may do that to e-transfer to the root treasurer and just state on it Pathfinder Bible Experience and it will go to the right place. If you're here in church, you can put it in the envelope that's in front of you on the chair, the pocket of the chair. And write on it, Pathfinder Bible Experience, and that will go to the right place. It's now, it's now our children's corner time. will be done by the Pathfinders. As the children go around, they'll be coming around with their nice, cute little baskets. And those baskets are for us to put our little changes. So this is not our main offering, but this is just our loose money that will go towards funding of the children ministries of this church. Thank you very much.
Good morning, bo Good morning, boys and girls. This week's children's story is about the story of Gideon and his faith in God. Does anyone know who Gideon was? For those of us who don't know who he is, here's the story of Gideon. The story of Gideon starts out with God not being not very happy being not very happy with his people, the Israelites. If you remember, the Israelites were the ones God saved from Pharaoh, but hundreds of years has passed since then. Throughout all that time, they still did evil in the eyes of God. The Midianites weren't their friends. They ruined all their crops and animals, and they, took the, and they forced the Israelites to hide out in caves. After all of this, they finally decided to ask God for help. The cool thing about all this is that even though God wasn't happy with the Israelites, he still listened to them and answered their prayer. This is where Gideon comes into the story. An angel of the Lord came and sat next to him. The angel spoke to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, If the Lord is with us, why is all this bad stuff happening? Where are all the miracles our fathers told us about? The Lord replied to Gideon, Go with all your strength and save Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you to do it. Then, then Gideon started making excuses. But Lord, how can I save Israel? My people are the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the smallest and youngest in my family. But God said, I will be with you, and you will defeat the Midianites together. Then Gideon asked for a sign. He wanted to make sure that he was really talking to God. He sent an offering of meat and unleavened bread down on a rock, and fire came from the rock and completely consumed the bread and, the bread and meat. And then the angel of the Lord disappeared. Gideon still wanted to make sure that God would save the Israelites, so he asked for another sign. He placed a piece of wool from a sheep on the ground if the piece of wool was wet and and the ground around it was dry, then he would know that God would save them. When Gideon checked the wool in the morning, it was soaking wet and the ground was dry. Still, Gideon asked for one more sign. This time, he asked that the piece of wool would be dry and the ground would be wet. Sure enough, the next morning, it was just as Gideon asked. So Gideon gathered up an army and set out for the Midianite camp. Gideon was probably feeling pretty good about all this. He had lots of men to help him fight, and God promised he would help him win. God had something a little different in mind. He told Gideon he had too many men in his army. He knew that Israel would think they defeated the Midianites on their own without God's help. So God said to Gideon, announce to the people, anyone who's afraid may go home now. Then 20,000 of them left. That's a lot of people. More than half of the whole army went home. Only 10,000 stayed. But Gideon still felt all right. At least they had 10,000 men, right? Not for long. God told Gideon that he still had too many men. They went down to the river for a drink, and the Lord told him, Separate the men that drink from the water like a dog, and get the ones that drink up from their knees with their cupped hands. I'm thinking this took quite a while with all the men, with all the men but Gideon did it. Surprisingly, only 300 men got on their knees and drank from their hands. All the rest looked silly, like drinking like dogs. God told Gideon that he only wanted three, they only wanted these 300 men. This way, when they won, the Israelites would know that God was in control with only these 300 men left. Gideon didn't know what God was going to do to help him. There were so many Midianites, and guess just 300 of them. He was, worried that he, he was so worried that he wasn't getting, getting any sleep. So God decided to make him feel better. During the night, the Lord spoke to Gideon. If you are still afraid that I'm going to help you win, go down in the valley with your servant, Pura, where the Midianites are staying and listen to what they're saying. You feel much better after that. 
Gideon was still afraid and took Pura and snuck down to the Midianite camp. Just as he arrived, he heard one of them talking to his friend about a dream he had. He was saying, I dreamt that a round loaf of bread came rolling into our camp. It came so fast that it ran right into one of our tents and made it fall over. His friend responded, this must, this must mean the sword of Gideon and that God will help him win the Midianites. As soon as Gideon heard this, he worshiped God and ran back to the camp. He returned and called out, get up, the Lord has given us the Midianite camp. He divided all the men in three groups and gave them all trumpets and empty jars with torches inside. Gideon and the men surrounded the camp in the three groups. When Gideon started to blow his trumpet, rest followed. They blew their trumpets and yelled, A sword for the, a sword, I mean, for, for the Lord and for Gideon. They broke, their, they broke their jars that they were carrying and held on to the torches in one hand and their trumpet in their other hand, shouting, A sword for the Lord and a sword for Gideon. When the Midianites heard this, they started yelling and running around. They all, when, when, they all, when all the trumpets started blowing again, the Midianites started freaking out, and they started to turn on each other. The, the, rest, of, the rest that got away were captured by the men of Ephraim, by the Jordan, because, Ge, because Gideon sent out messengers ahead of, ahead of them, to let, them know, to let them know that they were coming. That day, God saved Gideon from the Midianites. Without God, nothing, none of this would have been possible. After this, Gideon learned his lesson and stopped worrying. With God, nothing is impossible. Does anyone want to say what they got from the story? That nothing is impossible with God by your side. Moses said, Let my people go. The moral of the story is anytime you're in a tough situation, know that you can ask God to give you strength because He wants to help you. Let us pray. Who would like to pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others. We are not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Would, anyone, would anyone else like to pray? All right. You guys can go to your seats now. Good morning, everyone. I said, good morning, everyone. How are you? You know, I just got word before I came up here, which has changed the way that I'm going to make the offering appeal. For those of you who have attended the prayer line would have known or uh, recognized the name Nadine. Do you remember? Is, is, somebody said yes. Sister um, Pegas, you would probably know her as well, right? She was on her way to Ebenezer Church just now, 
had an accident and has died. Somebody was in the car with her and is in critical condition. Let me tell you something, brother. Since COVID, COVID has changed the way Christians think for the bad. We have now decided to choose how we're going to serve God. I'm going to suggest to you that we do not need a savior. Understand where I'm coming from. We have a savior. What we need is a Lord. A Lord is somebody who tells you what to do and you do it. God has mercifully asked us not to give what he hasn't given to us. He's asked us to give a portion of what he has shared with us. Isn't that fair? And I am baffled. I am baffled what it's like asking and uh, squeezing blood out of a stone. I'm not asking for those because there are a core who will give whether or not I ask or whether or not anybody asks or not. But there is also a group of individuals that will come, absorb, give thanks, but give no change. Something is wrong with that. And it seems as though some who are online have absolved themselves of the responsibility and the obligation to share some of that which God has shared with them. Am I telling the truth? And so we're coming to the point now where it is almost, <laughs> and sisters, don't you back me up here. We're at the critical point in our giving. And we can come here and praise the Lord and do all of these things until we come here and the lights are off. Until we come here until there's no heat because the electricity bill hasn't been paid and the gas hasn't been paid. And lo and behold, the mortgage might not be paid too, so there's going to be a lock on the door. I told you, it's changed the way I'm thinking here. We can't, we can't sugarcoat this thing. We've got to reach a point where we, we are serious. God has asked us to give a portion, a fraction, just a certain amount. And if you have it and are giving, wonderful. But I'm speaking to the, those who allow the offering basket to whiz by them when they can give. You are who I'm speaking to. You have no idea how much of a blessing you have just received. Um, we have just removed yourself from having. God wants to bless you. But he's asking you to be faithful. There I say anymore. So there are ways that we can give. We can use the online, and we can uh, go to uh, the the giving app. We can e-transfer it over, or we can do it the old-fashioned way, and just put it in the basket. But I'm asking you, Sister Nadine was on the prayer line this week. Her voice is now silenced. In fact. We were there on Thursday and we laid Sister Josine Bailey to rest. She was only 64. I'm asking you, before you are in a position where you cannot give because you're stone cold, let us give freely to God that which is his. And when you do so, he will open the windows of heaven. And we spoke the other night that in your home, there might be two doors, a front door and a back door. But you have many windows. God says he will open the windows of heaven, saying that you will not be able to contain the blessings that he has. It may not come in money, but boy, oh boy, I'm standing here today. Let me stop talking. Let's stand to your feet. We're going to offer a prayer. And the deacons and deaconesses will come and take our offering. Our Heavenly Father, we have seen how serious life can be. We have understood how gracious you have been. You have woken us up, you've given us jobs, you've given us money. Let us not withhold that which you have given to us. Let us share. And as we share, you have a way of, uh, like the woman with the jar, you fill it up again. I ask that you will be with us and be with all those online that we will also give for we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen.
special music by Mr. Darrell Woods. Darrell? Morning, church. You know, as, uh, as I think about everything that's been said so far, I couldn't, I couldn't help but think that uh, the song that I'm about to sing is a little bit fitting. Um, the song is called Safe From Harm. If I lose my life, I will find again. I will soar on eagles' wings, and then ever cease from war, rest in Jesus' arms. For the Lord, he's good, I am safe from harm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's the Lord that gives the prophets say and I will bless his name though he takes away I will trust not fear not to be alarmed for the Lord he is good my soul is saved from harm, I'm safe, I'm safe, in the eyes of the storm there's calm, for the Lord he's good, my soul is safe from harm. So when the tear ducks swell and my strength has gone, I will still believe when his name I call. He will rescue me for dusk turns to dawn. For the Lord, He is good. My soul is safe from harm. I'm safe, I'm safe. In the eyes of the storm, there's calm. For the Lord, He For the Lord, He's good. For the Lord, He's good. My soul is safe from harm. Church.
Happy Sabbath, church. Please stand with me for the scripture reading. Today's scripture reading is taken from Daniel 6, verses 1 to 5. Again, that's Daniel 6, verse 1 to 5. And I'll be reading to you from the New International Version. It pleased Darius to appoint 120 satraps to rule throughout the kingdom, with three administrators over them, one of whom was Daniel. The satraps were made accountable to them so that the king might not suffer loss. Now Daniel so distinguished himself among the administrators and the satraps by his exceptional qualities that the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. At this, the administrators and the satraps tried to find grounds for charges against Daniel in his conduct of government affairs, but they were unable to do so. They could find no corruption in him because he was trustworthy and neither corrupt or negligent. Finally, these men said, we will never find any basis for charges against this man, Daniel, unless it has something to do with the law of his God. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Please remain standing. My soul is exceedingly sorrowful at this time. There's a lot I could say, but right now, just let us pray. Those who want to come, come. Your brokenness. Your brokenness be healed in God's presence. Your brokenness be healed in God's presence. Bring him all your burdens. Bring him all your pain. Your brokenness be healed in God's presence. Your brokenness be healed in God's presence. Your brokenness be healed in God's presence. Bring him all. Eternal Father, at this time, we come before your holy presence. We just want to thank you, Lord, that you have made a way of escape for us. That when we are in the valley, when we are broken, <laughs> as we have just sung, we can come before a holy God and we can find peace, we can find solace, we can find everything that you promise us as we come before you. Because Lord, you promise that you will never ever leave us or forsake us. The world have gone in such a way, O oh Lord, that most of the time all we can hear is bad news. But thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you have made a way of escape for us. And even in our midst of problem and tribulation and trouble, Lord Jesus, we can call upon you and you are there to give us solace. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord. Your love is so great. Your love is so wonderful. Your love is so precious. And Father, as we come before you at this time, we just ask that you will accept us. We are sinful. Lord, we have gone astray. But thank you for the way that you have made. Even before the foundation of the earth, you have made a way of escape. Lord, when we have studied the great controversy that is going on, Father, sometimes we stand, sometimes we ask the question, Lord, how long? How long, how long, oh Lord? But you said, wait, my child. Wait, my child. The war is not yet over. But we will win. We have won. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you. Jesus, your people have come before you at this present time. They are kneeling at the mercy seat. Lord, come by here at this time. I ask, oh God, I implore that you'll come by at this time and you will touch every soul that is kneeling before you at this time. Father, as our faces are different, so is our every need. And we ask that you will come by. And you will take care of all those need, Lord, as I give a couple of seconds for all your people to pray and ask of you to just come by and heal what is aching them. Jesus. Lord, I just want to thank you. There are those that sit at this time and mourn in the last of loved one. Even at this present time, Lord, one of your child on our way to church, and she was taken out. But thank you for that resurrection. Thank you for that hope that you have given us. It will not last forever. Lord, in other parts of the world, bomb is dropping left and right. Even within our country as we sit here in Canada. Things are happening left, right, and center. Lord, sometimes we do not know what to do. All we have to do is just hold on to the end of your garment. And Lord, even then sometimes we become so weak that we just have to ask you to hold on to us and never let us go. We just want to praise you. We just want to thank you that these doors stay open, that we can come in and we can praise you. In songs, in worship, in praise, in prayer. Lord, come by here. We know your Holy Spirit is here. Just come by here and put solace within our hearts. Father, just want to thank you for the manservant that you have brought in today. Daniel saw. Lord, you have given him a word. And Lord, just asking you that it may be a word of comfort and peace and solace to our heart. Father, come by here. Touch your people once again. Those who are sick, Father, touch them with a healing hand. Those who are lost for some reason, as they're talking about so much time now, mental this and mental that. Father, we just have to look up to you and you will keep our heart and our mind in perfect peace. We just want to thank you. So Father, as we tabernacle 
one with the other. We just ask that your Holy Spirit will come by and calm our peace and calm our soul. Lord, do not forget those who are online, those who could not come out today, where they, wherever they are. I just ask that you will come by and you will touch them. And may each and every one that is within this building and other building today, your holy day of rest, that they will enjoy it because we are sitting at the feet of Jesus. So thank you, Lord, for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name I ask, amen and amen. Bring him all. Bring him all your burdens. Bring him all your pains. Your brokenness be healed. Your situation be healed. Your family be healed. Your brokenness be healed. God's presence. Our senior pastor, Pastor Myrie, our assistant pastor, Pastor Bonnick, as they had told you last week, would not be able to be here today because of the celebration in Mississauga Church celebrating 50th year anniversary and all the past pastors of that church will be gathering there. However, our senior pastor did not leave us empty but left us in capable hand. So the speaker for today is Dr. Daniel Saw who currently serves as a professor in the Faculty of Psychology at the Berman University in Alabama, Alberta, sorry, Canada. Prior to this role, he served as the Canadian Program Manager for ADRA Canada, a non-government organization, humanitarian agency based in Ontario, which is a part of the global ADRA network. He is a trained psychological first aid instructor with the Red Cross, registered psychotherapist, mental health professional. He sits as a member on, this, on several NGO alliances and is a chair of the Emergency Management NGO Consortium of Canada and oversees strategic relationships and partnerships. He holds his undergraduate degree in health sciences and graduate degrees in public health, international development, theology and human relationship, psychology. And these were attained from the University of York, Andrews University, Loma Linda University, and Wilfred Laurier University, respectively. He has served in the Canadian Armed Forces in the Royal Canadian Chaplaincy, served as captain, now retired, and currently as a chaplain with the Toronto Police Services. He's an ordained minister and has served for 20 years in pastoral ministry in over seven churches. In addition, he also served as the health ministries coordinator for the Canadian Union. He believes in holistic ministry that embraces mind, body, spirit, and believe that God has called us for such a time as this, to do kingdom business. He is dedicated and passionate to help people build resilience, recover, and return to a life of normalcy. Above all, he loves God, and seek to lift Jesus up and point all to the Savior of the world in preparation for his soon return. But before Dr. Daniel Saw comes to us and impart God's word, our praise team will minister to 
and with us in preparation. Have our hearts prepared and breathe a word of prayer. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. Good afternoon and happy Sabbath, everyone. There's a scene described in Revelation 5 where there's a seal that holds a book and it has seven seals. And they looked high and they looked low and they could find no one to open the seal. And so John began to cry and the angel said, no, wait, there is someone. There is someone who can open the seal and he's the lamb. He's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. And when he came forward and he began to open the seals, the angels and the four and twenty elders and the four beasts began to sing a song. Worthy, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And then it says every creature which was in heaven and which was on, in the earth and under the earth, such as are in the sea and all that is in them, he heard saying, blessing and glory and honor and power be unto him that sitteth on the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever and ever. So today let's join that chorus that has already begun in heaven and let's, let's give our honor and our glory to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords. Stand as we sing, be glorified.
ourselves over and over is that our purpose for being on here on this planet is to give him the glory so that our lives and everything that we do and everything that we say and everything that we get ourselves involved in glorify God because that's why we are here
Be glorified. 
Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. We bless the name of the Lord. We praise His name. Great is His name and greatly to be praised. If you're happy and alive, happy to be alive, would you say amen? If you're happy and you know it, would you say amen? 
If you're blessed and highly favored, what do you say, amen? This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice. We heard about it and be glad in it. God has spared our lives to see this first Sabbath of the second quarter of 2024. Welcome to the first Sabbath of April. What a great God. Amen. I want to thank God for our praise team for preparing our hearts in meditation to receive God's Word today. I want to thank our praise team. I want to thank all of our participants today for the wonderful, heartfelt, spirit-filled prayer, special music, the offering called today, our children's story, reading of Scripture. We are here not because we've done anything good, but because of the goodness and greatness of God. It's an honor to be here with the Ruth Church family to worship, praise, celebrate. God has done great things for you. It's been a long time. The last time I was here was before this beautiful church was established permanently here at Torbram, at least on this side of eternity. I was on Ruth Avenue while you were renting that facility. I'm so glad to be back in God's house today. I want to thank your dear pastor who is a close colleague and dear friend and brother and mentor to me, Dr. Myrie, for a kind invitation to be here with you all today. I want to thank Elder Thompson for the gracious, sometimes we say auspicious words of introduction. Here's a true introduction. I'm just a nobody that has come to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. And that's the truth. That's the truth. We are here only because of the mercies and grace of God. Today I want to speak to you on the subject entitled, The Other Side of the Miracle. The Other Side of the Miracle. And you're probably wondering, what on earth am I going to be talking about today? Well, I'm so glad you asked. I want you to stay with me on the journey as we receive God's Word today. May God prepare your hearts and minds as we have been blessed so far to now crown and put the icing on the blessing that God has already given us. So welcome to the house of God. Those of you who are online, viewing, streaming, watching in time to come in the archives, we welcome you to the house of God. May you be greatly and immeasurably blessed today. Let us pray. Blessed Heavenly Father, just one more time we come to seek your face. We thank you for your powerful presence that we have felt, experienced thus far. And now as we come to this segment of the service, as we wait upon your word, may we not be disappointed. Remove every distraction that you will be our main attraction, that we will receive the living word and receive the written word in our hearts. And we ask now, even now, may you alone be lifted up and be glorified. And we ask now that you'll lead us into all truth. Fill us, quench our thirst with living water, and feed us with the bread of heaven is our prayer in Jesus' almighty name. Amen and amen. The other side of the miracle. Have you been there? Have you been there? Let me ask you a question. How many of you have experienced a miracle in your life? Let me see your hands. Everyone's hand should be uh, lifted up, popping up right, right across the house of God today. You've ex now, those of you who have not experienced a miracle yet, just keep on living. Well, the truth of the matter is, <laughs> it's a miracle to be alive today. But we'll get there. Uh, you know, if you have not experienced a miracle um, you have, but you may not have, you may not know it. You may not realize it. You may not recognize it, but there are miracles all around us. And we're going to break that down in the next few minutes and time together as we share God's word. Uh, I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. 
um, it's going to require a paradigm shift today, just uh, a new um, way of looking at things. Probably God needs to put on some um, new spiritual spectacles on your eyes so that we can see what God wants to show us and reveal to us today. We've all heard about the 33 miners uh, several years ago that were trapped in that terrible um, mine disaster. 33 miners, if you remember, in the South American content in the beautiful country of Chile. And they were trapped not for one day, not for seven days, not for 21 days. They were trapped there for how long? 69 days. 69 days. Do you, can you imagine to be in a place that is like a dungeon, dark, very minimal oxygen, food has run out, just a few dregs left of water, and, and all they had was each other. And there were a few people in, on that team that said, we need to pray, we need to seek the Lord. And they prayed each day asking God for a miracle, asking God to send someone to help and save them and to deliver, rescue them. Each day for 69 days, they prayed consistently, diligently, faithfully, and they prayed and worshiped each day. We thank God for the influence of faith believers. We thank God that as Christians, we can exercise and be a witness in times of difficulty, disaster, and destruction. Could it be that God is calling us to be faithful, not when the times are all going well for us, when the times are fine and dandy and sweet like candy. Could it be that God is calling us to be faithful when it gets dark, when it gets difficult, when problems arise, when you feel that life is spiraling out of control, God is calling us to take a stand. What if those Christians decided that they were not going to share their faith or they were going to just keep it quiet and pray to themselves and amongst themselves. They would have lost a grand and golden opportunity to be a witness to the others. And I believe that God intervened in their lives and performed the rescue miracle. The first miracle is that all of them survived. Not one died. And the second miracle was that they were rescued. And, and the other side of the miracle was that they did not give in to despair and defeat. And hence, when they were rescued and lifted from the deep shafts of that mine, they named that place Campamento Esperanza, which means Camp Hope. As God's children, are we not a people of hope? Look what God has done for you and I. Just look at your life. Look at what God has wrought and accomplished in your life. Uh, life is a miracle from conception to gestation to birth. Uh, life is a miracle. You know, we talk about miracles as if it's sometimes something abstract, like pie in the sky, theoretical, exceptional, effervescent. We talk about it as if it's beyond our grasp, like a good story about someone else. But what about, what about your life? And you're praising God for what he has done for you up until and up until and up to this point in your life? Are you not grateful to God for what he has done for you? Are you not grateful to God to be in his house today? If you look back at your life, you may not have been here had it not been for the grace and the mercy and the miracle working power of our living God. You're not seeing what I'm saying, so let me help you today. It's a miracle that God woke you up this morning. Can I get a witness? 
I'm grateful to my God. It's a miracle that you got that job over someone else, over the how many X amount of applicants for that job. It's a miracle that God saved you from that near-death accident. It's a miracle that God uh, helped and healed you on your sickbed in that season of your illness. Can I get a witness up in here? It's a miracle that God opened that door of opportunity in spite of the obstacle that was confronting you. It's a miracle that, that, that you got into that school that you applied for when you thought that you couldn't make it. Your grades was not high enough and that you, your CV was short uh, uh, in terms of deficiency. But God got you into that school. God helped you finish from that school and God landed that job for you and then some. It's a miracle. Oh, you're not seeing what I'm saying. It's a miracle that, that though you are mo the most unlikely candidate, God granted you favor and gave you promotion. I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. Uh, it, it's a miracle that, 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 that we are la in the land of the living. It's a miracle, uh, Ruth Church family, that God moved you from renting at Ruth Avenue to purchase, build from ground zero at Torbram today. And now you have your own house of worship. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. You better believe it, my brother. It's even a greater miracle that God became a man, a human being. It's a miracle that Jesus loved you and I and the world with the cross. It's a miracle that he suffered, bled, died, and rose again. It's a miracle, ere a mystery of God's sweet salvation. Ah, are you seeing what I'm saying today? The other side of a miracle. Turn your Bibles with me to Daniel chapter 6. We read a very familiar passage of Scripture. You have heard this from a child. You've seen stories and movies and heard great preachers proclaim and exposit this particular passage of Scripture, this wonderful story nestled in the Old Testament. The middle of this book, the midpoint of this book, chapter 6, because there are only 12 chapters, so we're in the middle of this book, Daniel chapter 6, and I want to thank our scripture reader for today. Thank you for reading God's Word. And the Bible tells us, and I don't want to go through every verse for the interest of time, but we know the gist and the essence of the story. We know that Daniel came a long way and the three Hebrew worthies and perhaps there were some others that are unnamed and unmentioned in the book of Daniel in this account. But from this narrative, we discover something powerful. So let us actually glean and gain some of the golden uh, gospel nuggets and some wisdom from the word of God today. Daniel chapter 6, if you found it, would you say Amen. Daniel chapter 6 is a wonderful story. I love this story because it is relevant and real and relational for us today. The Bible says that it pleased Darius, who was the king of the then known world. He had, of course, uh, succeeded Belteshazzar and, of course, Belshazzar rather, Belshazzar, the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. So he had succeeded. Darius was part of the Medes and Persian kingdom. Daniel uh, somehow was uh, able to survive, not survive, but I like to use this word, thrive. Uh, Daniel was able to thrive through uh, a previous kingdom, the most powerful of kingdoms of the then known world historically. Daniel thrived. Daniel was given favor uh, it, by Nebuchadnezzar and throughout his entire reign. And even though things went south when Nebuchadnezzar's grandson took the throne, Daniel still maintained his position of influence. The Bible says that Darius set Daniel over his kingdom. But there were also three other presidents. Uh, but Daniel was first. 
It says, of whom Daniel was first in verse 2. Isn't that wonderful? Is it good to know that God wants us to be the first? Uh, but sometimes we don't always get there immediately. It's a journey. It's a journey of faith. But I want to let you know from the get-go that God wants always the best for you and I. God wants us to be the head and not the tail. God wants us to have the very best in life. He wants us to lead and blaze the trail. God wants us to stand out and stand up for Him. God is an amazing and a wonderful Savior and God who leads us uh, every step of the way and leads us by ways we know not of. Let's keep building our case. And the Bible tells us that these presidents would give an account to Daniel <laughs> that the king should have no charge against them, okay? Or verse 2 tells us that they, of course, would have no law. So in other words, Daniel was responsible for, shall we say, the operations of the kingdom to ensure that everything was moving uh, with uh, accuracy, smoothly. There were no gaps. He ensured that the business was flowing like a waterfall. Daniel was given some very heavy responsibilities. Can you imagine? You had Daniel who was ensuring that ambassadorial duties were conducted, that the kingdom then was represented well throughout the then known world. There was good communications, good fiscal and financial management, good interpersonal relationships. Daniel was responsible for this great task. This, this authority and this responsibility was incumbent upon him. The Bible says in verse 3, Then Daniel was preferred. He was distinguished. He showed distinction in his deportment. He showed character in his conduct. And, and, and he was distinguished above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him. And the king thought to set him over the whole realm. You see, when you're walking with Jesus, when you're talking with Jesus, when you're praising your Lord all day long, he gives you an excellent spirit. Can I talk to somebody? See, that excellent spirit doesn't come because of your good looks and because of your heritage and history and your degree and pedigree. It comes because you're walking faithfully and consistently by the grace of God with your Lord. And I love this story because this story represents in part the story of our lives and the story that God wants to write and perform in our lives. What do you say out there? You know the story. And so Daniel was preferred. He had uh, favor. Shall we say favor? He had favor. And then verse 4 tells us something here. That the presidents and the princes sought to find something. So sought to find an occasion. You know what that means. Some type of uh, misconduct. Some type of charge against Daniel. They were looking to find some type of compromise and concession in his business practice, in his professional life, and here they tampered with his personal life. Now, it's one thing. See, Daniel didn't make, he didn't wear a facade. And what I'm trying to say is that Daniel was consistent in his professional life as he was in his personal life. Amen? Doesn't God want us to be consistent in every aspect and area of our lives? Yes, we can put on one front or show in our professional life. We put on our professional cloak or coat and then when we get home we take it off. Sometimes that it seems that Christians wear their Christian clothes in certain circles and environments. But when they get into another place, it's the 
horse of a different color. It's another story, as it were. Uh, you, you, you know, you stand up tall. You want to go under the table. Sit in the back pews on the seats at the back. You tend not to uh, want to speak up and speak out. Why? Because, well, maybe there's something to hide. I don't know. I don't know. But I just want to tell somebody here today that God wants us to remain uh, consistent in our work life, professional life, and in our personal life because they should be one and the same. Because character should remain the same in your outward as well as your inward conduct. So the Bible tells us something powerful. It says that there was some jealousy, rivalry taking place. How many of you have ever experienced that? We've all experienced that, right? And if you haven't, just keep on living. It's just around the corner. It happens at the workplace, at school, in your personal life, in family, even at church, unfortunately. Why? Because it's part of our sinful human nature. Anecdote of the scorpion and the tortoise. You remember the story, right? You know, the scorpion and the tortoise, you know, you know, the, 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 you know, the scorpion want to get over on the other side. And, and, and the scorpion doesn't know how to swim. So you know how the story goes, right? The, you know, the, the scorpion struck up, drummed up a conversation, and he tried to negotiate with the tortoise. Say, hey, you know what? I need a, a lift. I need a, you know, a little ferry over to the other side. And the tortoise said, but why would I do that? You know, if I give you a ride, put you on my back, <laughs> literally, you know, he's going to ride his back. <laughs> but then why would I do that? Because you're going to sting me. And then the scorpion said, but why, but why would I do that? If I sting you, we both would go sink and, and drown to our demise. Well, the tortoise thought about it and said, well, that's very true. That's logical. Isn't that logical? That makes complete sense. So therefore, the tortoise finally, after some reasoning, Hopefully from cause to effect, but he missed some part of, uh, a part of it. But he said, okay, hop on my back. I'll take you over. And as they started to go over, things seemed to be okay. It was a nice day with a favoring breeze. No great uh, waves or, you know, heavy waters. And they were moving over to the other side. And as they crossed the halfway point, all you could hear is, Ouch! Obviously, the scorpion did what he said he would not do. He stung him. And the tortoise said, as they began to sink and drown to their demise below the water, uh, getting immersed, why would you sting, sting me? You said you wouldn't. He said, I just can't help myself. It's my, in my nature. It's in our nature. To have a proclivity to sin, to be jealous to rival, to want to be better than the other person, have what the other person has because you don't have it. It's in our nature. But that's the reason why we have to go to God and look to Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. That's where we got to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus and our minds focused on Him. He besets us, will override and overrule and overcome us. The Bible says that they could not, in verse 4, find no charge, no fault, as Daniel was faithful. Everybody say faithful. faithful. Hallelujah. Faithful. God is looking for some faithful men and women today. Do we have anybody in the house of God today who wants to be faithful? The Bible says that Daniel uh, was faithful. There was no error or fault found in him. God be praised. His life was sold out to God. His life was dedicated to God. His life was consecrated to God. This is an example of a godly lifestyle. Verse 5 says, And these men said, We shall not find any charge against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. So now they intrude, interfere, invade his personal life. Isn't that supposed to be private? But for Daniel, his private life 
was consistent with his public life. Can I get a witness? Praise be to God. There was no distinction because Daniel remained consistent and constant in his character by the God's grace. Then the scene changes. Like a, a great movie or a novel that you read, it has different scenes and chapters. Uh, uh, so now we move from this one scene of Daniel chapter 6 to the next scene. Here we see God giving Daniel promotion. Isn't that wonderful? God is giving Daniel promotion. He's blessed. He's highly favored. And he's promoted. Amen? What a God we serve. Um, I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. You see, the uh, Bible says in verse 6, Then these princes and presidents, they conspired together. They came together. You see, that happens a lot. There are people who will uh, conspire against you. They'll smile in your face while they're trying to take your place. There are people who will uh, say, you know, you can do it. You've got my support and vote of confidence. But behind your back, they are working to undermine you and take you down. You see, that any type of the enemy. So they did the same thing as they do to us in today's world, in our lives. They did the same thing to Daniel. Some things never change. Some people never change. Human nature has not changed since sin entered into this world. Did you know that? It's actually only gotten worse. But thanks be to God, he has a remedy because he is the remedy. Okay, we'll come back to that in a moment. Let's stick a pin there. So the Bible says that they conspired in all the presence, verse 7. How much it took to take that one man, one person, one child of God, one son or daughter of God. It takes uh, princes and presidents, captains and counselors to take down one person. Yes. See, when you're with God, you and God are a formidable force. When God is with you, you've got the majority. Can I talk to somebody here? To, you're not seeing what I'm saying. It takes all these people to conspire. And they're even as they conspire, they are perspiring. They conspire and perspire. And now they try to make a decree against Daniel's personal and private and spiritual life against his God. So you know the story. I don't have time to read every detail. I'm just giving you the paraphrase, the, the quick version today. And so essentially the story is that they made a decree. They drafted up <laughs> this, this, I would call this a, you know, this is not even a real law. Some pseudo law. This is, this is something off the cuff. This is not part of the constitution. This is not even an amendment to the Constitution. This is an anomaly to the Constitution. And they said, okay, well, we're going to just honor uh, King Darius or Darius, and we're going to bring this decree so he can establish it uh, in honor of his uh, powerful presence as the king of this, uh, this dynasty, of this empire. And so... They knew about the laws of the Medes and Persians. When a law is instituted, it cannot be altered or changed. So, of course, they trained, did their homework, and they knew that if they got the approval of the king once approved, there is no recourse. You cannot reverse it. It is immutable. And so, the Bible tells us in verse 9, King Darius signed the writing and the decree, not realizing the motive behind the decree. See, at that point in time, he is only seeing himself. So when you look at yourself, you kind of lose sight of other things. When you look at yourself, when you're self-absorbed and, and self-focused, you can't see the danger ahead of you. You can't see the evil before you. You can't see the machinations and the covert operations of the enemy. And so he was self-focused in the moment. 
But the Bible tells us something so powerful here um, in verse 10. Check it out. Check it out with me here. You know the story, but you got to love this story. This is one of the best stories. And I always like to go back to this story because it encourages my faith. And I pray that it will encourage your faith today. I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. Stay with me now. You're going to see it in a moment, momentarily. Now the Bible says in verse 10, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed. So Daniel knew about it, right? When you're connected with God, there is no secret of not what only God can do. But there is no secret for the child of God. See, Daniel knew God will give you discernment. God will give you the inside scoop. As they say today, God will give you the intel. Can I talk to somebody? Oh, yes. When you're connected with the HIA, the Heavenly Intelligence Agency, it surpasses and it surmounts the CIA and the Mossad and the FBI and the RCMP and the CSIS. God's Heavenly Intelligence Agency is able to give you the insight, the intel, the information so that you're not surprised or taken by surprise. We're not seeing what I'm saying today. Oh, the Bible says that he knew that it was signed. But it was nothing for Daniel. Because he went into his house as his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem. You know why they pray toward Jerusalem, right? Because that was the direction of the holy city, but also the place where they anticipated the coming of the Messiah. So they had hope. Daniel had hope. Daniel realized that he was there on a mission assignment. This was not his permanent home. His home was in the holy city. His home was toward Jerusalem. Can I talk to somebody here today? Wherever God places you and puts you, don't get too comfortable. Because that's not your home. God has gone to prepare a home for you. So keep your eyes toward the eastern sky. Can I talk to somebody here today? Oh, yes, it's so easy when you get promoted to rest on your laurels. Oh, you have arrived. Hmm. Feels good here when people have to answer to you, when you have to give orders, and that people have to report back to you. You got a little bit more than you had. When you first started out in life, you have a little bit more than you did 5 and 10, 15, 20 years ago. You have more pairs of shoes now that you just throw them out or you give them to goodwill. You have more clothes on your back. You not only have uh, one bike, but forget about bikes. You have a car and you have more than one car. Let me talk. Let's not forget where God has brought us from. Because as much as God has blessed us today... He reserves the right to take it back because we don't own it. He owns it. We are just but custodians and stewards of the resources God has entrusted us because he saw something in you and he granted you his favor because he tests your faithfulness. Hmm. The Bible tells us that he opened up his window. It was not just for fresh air. We need it too. But, uh, but, but he opened up his windows toward Jerusalem and kneeled. Did you hear that? And kneeled upon his knees. Three times a day and prayed and gave thanks. And I love this part. Before his God as he did. Consistently before time. As he always did. This was his practice. This was his routine. This was his lifestyle. Can I talk to somebody? It was a holy habit. Can I talk to somebody? A holy habit. Daniel had a holy habit of praying to his God. And he was not ashamed. And he was not afraid to pray even in the light of the knowledge that this decree was signed. And it was about To affect his life potentially. What do you do when the decree is signed? When you know something is being done against you. 
Do you, do you just shift a little bit and say, okay, you know, God will forgive me. I just, you know, hide this, I'll shift, sweep it under the carpet. No one will know. God will just overlook and blink it and wink at my head. What do you do? When you're tested, when you know that something is about to happen because of your lifestyle, your practice, your belief, your faith, and then what do you do? Do you allow it to allow you to con- do you allow it to make you compromise and make concessions and give in, or do you stand firm by the grace of God and say, "Lord, come what may, my life is in your hands. You have brought me this far, not to leave me now." Ah, I love this story. Isn't it beautiful? I love this story. But we need to hasten on. And so Daniel's consistent life irritated other people. Uh, Can I talk to somebody? Uh, Your consistent and faithful life may annoy and irritate another person. But, but, but it really shouldn't. It really should be an example. It should be a witness. They should be, wow, you know what? I admire his or her faith. You know what, God? I want to thank you for his or her example. But no, human, human nature says, human nature wants to take it down. Human nature is jealous and rivals and wants to compete and vie against. And, but the whole thing was it started because they were jealous because of Daniel's favorite position. But I want to remind you before we get ready in the next few minutes to land the plan. I want to remind you that what God gives you, no one can take it away from you. When God places you... When God places you, they may try to interfere. They may try to roll back. They may try to uh, create a scenario or scene or simulation that, that is trying to get you out. But when God places you, he, you stay. If God wants you to be removed, He will remove you. And even if it's circumstances um, that is outside of God's will, He may permit it for a temporary time. But God is going to prepare you. He's going to restore and He is going to reestablish you. So trust God. I, I tell you, in my, short, in my short sojourn on this life, I've lived long enough to see God's faithfulness. And all he's asking you and I is to remain a little longer faithful to him. And when you're faithful to God. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. So your shout is coming in a moment. Hold on, just hold on. The Bible says that in verse 11, then they assembled and found Daniel praying. Caught him in the act. Caught him in the act, making his supplication before God. Okay, I, I need to fast forward this. So basically, they went back to the king. They reported, hey, we found Daniel. I don't know if they had Kodak back then, but they, you know, had some evidence. And I guess it was in more than one wit- mouth of the witness. So you had more than one, two or three people affirming and confirming. Yeah, Daniel, yeah, we saw him praying. And he deliberately disobeyed your decree. O king. And as you have signed it, now we must take action. The Bible says in verse 14, then the king, when he heard these words, he was greatly displeased with himself. You see, people in powerful positions, God allows you to find favor. But sometimes in their position, There is a little bit of pride and arrogance. And so they don't see. But you see, the king knew who Daniel really was. So he realized that he had made an error in judgment. But he couldn't change it. The Bible says that his heart was set on Daniel. Wow. Isn't that amazing? I'm telling you. Just be faithful and God will grant you favor in all things. Whatever circle, situation, workplace, wherever you are in, God will establish. God will lift you up. God will grant you His. He is a living God, by the way. The Bible says that He labored till the going down of the sun to deliver Him, but He could not alter the law of the Medes and Persians. Verse 15 tells us, that these men assemble unto the king 
And he said, Now, O king, know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. Ah. So you know what happened? They arrested Daniel. He was arrested for praying. Will that day come in this time in which we're living in? Yes. Is it possible that we'll be arrested for worshiping God in the Sabbath? Yes. Is it possible that we would be arrested for praying to God? Yes. Would it be uh, possible that we would be arrested for standing up for our faith and speaking truth in love? Yes. Would it be possible that we would be arrested for taking a position based on the principle of God's word when the world is against what we believe? Yes. You better believe it. Well, God, God certainly got Daniel in his hands. The Bible says that the king commanded and they brought Daniel. And as the law was, he had to be cast, of course, into the den of lions. See, prayer, faith, and believing in God, problems is not evidence that God does not care or God does not love you. Can I talk to somebody here today? Uh, but, but it does mean that in our problems, God is present. It does mean that when we go through problems, we will have His presence. We will have His power. We will have His peace. We will have His provision in the problem. As the song says, if you didn't have any problem, how would you know that God can work? How would you experience His power? So sometimes, could it be just sometimes God permits us to get into a problematic situation? God allows a situation uh, for us to get into to test and try our faith. Hmm. And there's two things that I want you to keep in mind. We're talking about the other side of the miracle. We're getting there. It, so you and I might have faith in God. But the faith in God has to be tested to demonstrate our faithfulness to Him. Okay, let's get back to the word and we're coming to that stick a pin there for a moment you got to understand something um, um understand something you see daniel's faith got him into trouble <clears throat> okay hold on wait 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 um daniel's faith put him in the circumstances that he is currently and finding himself in huh whoa your faith may appear as if it is getting into a situation that is causing you grief and distress. And if you adjusted your faith a little, maybe if you just pull back on your faith a little, if you just, um, uh, just tweak your faith a little, maybe it will grant you favor in human eyes. So Daniel didn't care about favor of in, in human eyes per se. He respected those he worked with. He honored the king so long as, and so far as it did not conflict with his faith. But what Daniel purposed in his heart as he did in chapter 1 of his life was to serve God to represent God and to please the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. So you can imagine someone under normal circumstances would be going through a lot of stress. Uh, having studied psychology, it gives a little insight. You know, you know, someone going through these circumstances can develop anxiety and depression. And now, you know, that's a big problem today, especially since it was heightened by COVID-19 and the pandemic. <clears throat> and it is certain that under normal human conditions, he's under duress. He's going through depression, albeit maybe acute, but it is so difficult that he can't sleep. Or at least 
It appears that way, or at least in human terms, no one could sleep. They would be restless. They would be fearful for their lives. So it's taking an emotional hit, a psychological hit, a physical hit, and even a spiritual hit. But the Bible tells us somehow that Daniel... Yes. Huh? Uh, because the king said unto Daniel, verse 16, Thy God, whom thou serves continually, consistently, he will deliver you. Even the king didn't realize what he was saying. <laughs> Did the king really believe what he just said? Uh, that was just, maybe he heard this from one of Daniel's devotions. Maybe he heard it from one of Daniel's prayers. And so he said, okay, I'm going to borrow a line. I've never experienced it, but I heard it, and I'm going to borrow his line. He's borrowing Daniel's faith. Hello, somebody. He's borrowing Daniel's faith. Yeah. He's speaking the right language, but, but God would have it that he would bring his statement, his words, and then match it with experience subsequently. And the king's word now will be tested. And his words now will translate into a faith experience in what he didn't realize what he is saying. Neither did he fully believe in what he is saying. But we'll give him some credit. What do you say out there? Let's give the king, the king some credit. At least he acknowledged the God of Daniel. And we know the story. The stone came, covered it up. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, he was cast into the den of lions. And the king could not sleep all night, the Bible says. Can I talk to somebody? I'm talking about the other side of a miracle. When I was in school uh, a few years ago uh, in California, Loma Linda, I was coming down to my last year and getting ready to graduate. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you have graduated. How many graduates out there? Graduates? Some of you graduating this year, you know what I'm talking about. Don't pay off your school fees. You ain't getting your diploma, you ain't marching. Um, you might have hope, which is good. But at the end of the day, the school, it boils down to dollars and cents. And if you don't have it, you can't write a promissory note. It's not going to work. I'll pay you as soon as I graduate. Yes, right, that doesn't happen. So, so, you know, I had a little bit owing. I had worked, I had a scholarship, but I had some owing. It was actually um, seven, just over $7,000. And I'm saying, Lord, where am I going to get this $7,000 and then some a little bit? I, you know, my parents already gave me some seed money. Some family gave me some donations. I have scholars. I, I can't bug. I can't go take a loan right now because I don't want to take a loan to get into a further debt. Why would I do that? It doesn't make sound financial sense. I come home one day after studying. And I park my car on the curb. And, of course, I usually park it on the driveway where uh, I was staying, but I parked it on the curb that day because I was just going in to grab a quick bite so I can go back in the car to go back to the library to study because I had finals, and it was the last year. And <clears throat> the moment I parked the car, as soon as I closed, just ricocheting and ec echoing, and I looked through the little peephole of the door, I said, where's my car? I just parked it right there. Apparently, a young lady was texting her phone on her phone and was driving about 650 or 60, you know, uh, in, in, in that neighborhood street. And she slammed into my car. And with that speed and acceleration and, of course, impact, moved my car from off the curve up into part of the driveway so I couldn't see it directly through the window. A moment sooner, I would have been whiplashed, injured, disabled. I couldn't have finished school. And I said, but Lord, why now? I've got to study. I've got this exam. Oh, could you imagine? i got this exam. i got this paper due. It is just too much. I said, Lord, what is happening here? So now I had to deal with the whole drama of this car. I was trying to find her. She got out of the car, sat on the curb, and she was crying. Because she knew what she did. So I didn't come down hard on her. I tried to be a Christian. <clears throat> I tried. I said, Lord, please give me patience. Guard my tongue, my lips. Oh, Lord, help me. So I, the Lord heard my prayer. 
and I surrendered to him, and I said, look, you know what, okay, things happen, but please, next time, don't text and drive. So she said, would you report me to the police? I said, and she was afraid that I was going to purchase you, get a try. I said, no, I, I will overlook it. I did not report to the police. Maybe she felt guilty and she did it herself, but I didn't do it. <clears throat> And so I said, I just need your insurance. I need a car. So gladly, of course, she gave me the insurance, all of that. And uh, long story short, <clears throat> the insurance gave me a vehicle for the next two weeks to finish school. I didn't have my own vehicle, but they gave me a vehicle. Number one, I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. You ready for it? The other side of the miracle. The other side of the miracle. Um, they assessed and appraised the vehicle. And upon their appraisal, they said that the vehicle is a write-off. Uh, we think that um, we cannot fix it, so what we decided to do is to give you the full book value of your vehicle. I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. Uh, when, I, when, I, when I realized uh, uh, what they wrote and they sent me the letter, because everything has to be official in writing, I received a letter from the insurance just about a, a week before uh, graduation because you got to clear your debts. Uh, in the envelope was a letter. We assessed your vehicle to be seven thousand two hundred and seventy-eight thousand U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. Okay. And um, you know what? You can have your car back. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. So understand something here. Uh, when I looked at my tuition, it was just 7000 and a little bit over. So God not only covered my tuition, but gave me then some. I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. You see, I, I, I was saved. My life was spared. But the miracle wasn't over. God compounded that miracle. Can I talk to somebody? I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. You see, sometimes we only see one side, one dimension of the miracle. But God has to reposition you. God has to change your position so you can see that there's more to the miracle than meets the eye. Can I talk to somebody here today? What a faithful God. God is faithful when you trust Him. He always comes through at the right time. I didn't understand why it had to happen to me, but now I know that when God does something, He does it because there's a divine purpose and plan in it for your life and my life. Trust God. Sometimes after the promotion, the problem comes. But after the problem, God prepares you to receive your praise in the miracle. You see, his faith got him into trouble. But here's the good news. His faithfulness to God got him out of it. Oh, you're not seeing what I'm saying. Mm. See, somebody, this is what I'm saying. See, you may have been dismissed uh, from a prestigious circle, but, but God uh, will reappoint you. You see, your disappointment, as the saying goes, becomes God's divine appointment. Uh, uh, you may have been fired from the job that you thought that you own, that belonged to you. But God says, you get fired, I will rehire you somewhere else. Uh, you have been overlooked for a promotion and you thought that they're keeping you down but God is just preparing your character to elevate you and to plant your feet on higher ground can I talk to somebody you may have been discriminated but always remember what is done to you is done against your God and my God so they may discriminate you but God will honor you because when you honor God he will honor you when you stand up for Jesus, he will stand up for you. You may have been mistreated, marginalized, and minimized. But God is getting ready to unleash your full potential. You may have been delayed an offer, an opportunity. But that delay does not mean you are denied. Can I talk to somebody? You have been have been going and maybe are going through a wilderness right now, a desert in your life, a dry patch, a season that is breaking you. But your oasis is just around the corner. Stay faithful. You may be going through a breakup and a breakdown, but if you're faithful to God, your breakthrough is coming. 
Because great is his faithfulness. I've got to land a plane now. I'm not out of sermon. I'm just out of time. So the Bible says here is, is, is that in verse 20. Now you're going to see with me the other side of the miracle. Uh, and when he came to the den after the night was spent. Because you could imagine um, King Darius couldn't sleep all night. He was restless. Tossing and turning, the Bible says. And he came and with a lamentable voice uh, that God, God loves everyone. He loves even those who don't know him. But because of your faith, they will come to know the true and living God. Stand up for your faith. Don't deny your faith. Don't be ashamed of your faith. God is working through you to touch somebody and to transform and to point them and to lead them to the Savior of the world. Oh, Daniel, is thy God? What a question now. Check this. Is thy God? Now, that question should never be asked. <clears throat> But for all uh, checks and balances, is thy God whom thou serve thee from the lions? I am sure that uh, Darius or Darius heard about Daniel from the days of Nebuchadnezzar. This same person who gave wise counsel and advice. This person who uh, lived through the rise and fall of uh, kingdoms. This same Daniel. So he asked him a question as if it were, um, it was almost like a rhetorical question as it were. Just a rhetorical question. And he was waiting. There was a pregnant pause. We can't send any men or anyone down there because it's not, this is like, this is what you call supreme danger zone. This is the red zone. You can't get down there. And then, with bated breath, couldn't hear a pin drop. There from the dark, dingy den comes back the voice. O oh, king, live forever. Man, you could imagine that king started to jump for joy. He probably did a holy dance. He was experiencing instantaneous transformation. My God. My God. He personalized it. You must always, when you're going to an experience, tell somebody about your God. Not your parents' God. Not your grandparents' God. Not the pastor's God. Your God. My God, are you hearing me out there? My God has sent his angel and has shut the lion's mouth that no hurt has come upon me. That's miracle, number one on one side. Hold on, that's miracle on one side. That's the miracle we obviously see. That's the evidence or the evidential miracle. Are you ready? That's the evidential miracle. But what's the miracle on the other side? Get ready now. Let's get ready for this. As we get ready to land the plane. What's the miracle on the other side? See, uh, evidently, it was a miracle that he was not eaten and devoured by the lions. We get that. Praise God. That's always been my shout. That's always been the jump when I read this story. And that is very true. But the other side of the miracle is this. For as much as before him, innocency integrity was found in me O king for i have done nothing wrong that's the other side of the miracle hold on now you're not seeing what i'm saying the other side of the miracle is that he did not change his prayer life the other side of the miracle is that he did not change his posture the other side of that his faith did not waver the other side of the miracle is was that he was a witness of the power of god and it changed the heart of a pagan king can i talk to somebody the other side of the miracle the truth is to every miracle there are two sides there's a side where the sea is before us the trial the test the obstacle is ever confronting us but then there is the other side of the obstacle or the miracle when the problem is behind you did you get that the other side is when the problem now gets behind you the point is even when we reach another problem or obstacle we're only there because of the miracles that are behind us but how easy it is for us to forget the miracles behind us and only see the obstacles before us. Hmm? The Bible says, Then was the king exceedingly 
glad. Command it immediately. Get Daniel out of there. Now, where are those evildoers, conspirers of the kingdom, seditious, undermining? Send them to the den of lions. Did and fulfilled. Now, da now Darius could speak the law from his mouth. And he, he declared that they should be delivered or actually sent and placed in the lion's den. And we know the story, what happens then. You see, but it all began on bended knees. Amen. Today is your day of prayer and fasting. Yes. All great miracles, all movements of God, all demonstration of the power of God begins on bended knees. Yes. On bended knees. Humble and a contrite heart, spirit. Sometimes your blessing is on the other side. Wait for it. Sometimes your miracle is on the other side. It's coming. Wait for it. God is calling for a few good men and women in these closing times of earth's history. I'm getting ready here now. I'm landing the plane. It was just a few years ago. CRA. You know CRA? CRA. Canada Revenue Agency. Man, if, if, if a brown envelope does not <clears throat> make you stressed out a little bit or cause you to be unnerved, I don't know. But those brown envelopes, and, and we had received a brown envelope. It was a few years ago. And uh, he said, oh, you owe over $30,000 for, you know, um, a situation, a transaction that, you ex that took place. Uh, obviously, that's what they thought. That was their uh, observation, right? Their interpretation. But um, what we had to do was uh, file a notice of objection. And in filing that notice of objection, you've got to present facts. And you've got to assert or adduce the evidence before, of course, the notice of objection to ensure that their, uh, whatever you present is, of course, contradicting their claim. Well, we kept um, getting these, don't, these uh, notice of assessments and interest was accruing. Now, of course, my parents, you know, as, as all parents are, they get worried. They start, I said, no, let's pray. God is going to deliver. One year turned into two. Two years turned into three. Then the pandemic hit. And everything got pushed back except for the interest. <clears throat> the enemy... The enemy knows how to try to break us, how to get inside and try to wear us down, to make us worry and not trust God. But through it all, I said, Lord, you're in control. I want to be faithful and I, I want to ensure that all the evidence is lined up. And so finally, after the pandemic, they said, okay, we will have a hearing at the high court, at the tax court. So they set the date. Of course, there is natural human, you know, worryment. You get a little bit concerned, a little bit. But I had produced all the evidence and then some. And with much prayer, God took away the trepidation. I went that morning before the tax court. You had this lady. She looked like she was ready to take me down. She was sitting as the presiding judge. Then you had... If that wasn't enough, you had the two CRA lawyers that came down to work against or to work their case against mine. They put me in this little booth here with a glass and, and they said, we'll call you out when we need you to take the witness stand. And uh, they presented their case. And I said, Lord, this case is in your hands. You are the righteous judge. And then they took a recess. And that's to, you know, make your nerves even work more. But nonetheless, in the recess, I went into the recess room and I fell on my knees. And said, God, you brought me this far. Not to leave me now. Oh God, what a great God. And they reconvened. As they reconvened, they said, Mr. Saw, you can come to the witness stand now. Tell me. And she started to interrogate me. And by God's grace, he put the words in my mouth. 
she started to flip through a large uh, document that was compiled with all the evidences of paper and transactions. And she says, as I evaluate and assess the documents that you have adduced before the court today, you have been consistent. You have been faithful in your payments. And it doesn't seem that this claim holds any water in this court. This case is dismissed. Can I talk to somebody here today? When you're faithful to God, though there is a delay, God is working on your behalf. I'm talking about the other side of the miracle. I could have thrown in a towel, give up. I had to go for cut money I never had. Take a loan and upon another loan to get into debt. But God says, don't you know that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the Cadillacs, I mean the cattle upon a thousand hills are mine. I would not tell you, God says, if you trust me and be faithful. You see, your faith may get you into trouble, but your faithfulness in God because he is faithful will get you out of it. God is calling for a few good men and women today to be faithful, to stand on the faith platforms and to let him be known to the world. God is getting ready even now to position you, to promote you, to elevate you. God will not be underrepresented, neither will he be misrepresented. But it all begins on a, man, a bended knee. Is somebody here today knows what I'm talking about? If you believe that God is able to deliver you, stand to your feet with me as we worship him, as we close our service. If your heart's desire is a Lord, I know I've not been faithful, but because of your goodness, because of your gratefulness, because of your faithfulness, there is no shadow of turning with thee, because great, great, I said great, is your faithfulness. God is able. God is able. He is faithful to us. Let's remain standing as we sing our closing hymn. Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. today not to belabor the service but to give somebody who has been in the valley of decision you've been struggling with your faith you've been tested and tried and you're not sure but today God through the Holy Spirit has moved and is moving on your heart and you want to take a stand you want to come on the witness stand I understand that Pastor Mary was telling me there are some people here getting ready for baptism. If you're here in the house of God, would you raise your hand today? You're getting ready for baptism. I believe there's two or three he mentioned to me. If you're here today, would you raise your hand? If you're here today, if you're here today, I would even invite you to come to the front. But as we get ready to sing these last two, one or two verses, if somehow all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, God is speaking to you right now. The Holy Spirit is saying today, if you hear my voice, Harden not your heart. God is getting ready to come back to take us home. But before then, He puts our 
faith to the test to refine and to define us so that we will be prepared to represent him aright in this world and there's no greater joy to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords when you know God is with you you have nothing to fear because he your God and my God he is able so who wants to put God to the test today I invite you to just come as the praise team leads us into this call. Just on come to the hand, front here. We're going to pray for you. On every hand, come. the foe we come find. Jesus, drawn up in dread of the Spirit. Bids you come. Let times of ease be left behind. For Jesus. And onward to the One for Jesus. Is there one who wants to take a stand and say, I want to be faithful, oh God, today and for the rest of my life, because you are forever faithful. Just come as we sing the next verse. To him that overcomes the foe. To him that overcomes the foe. Christ reign and shall be him. Before. Meditatively, as the instruments play, all heads are bowed and eyes are closed. You're hearing the voice of God speaking to you even right now. Yesterday, you might have missed it. Tomorrow, you might not get it. But today is the day of your salvation. If there's somebody here, we have our elder here and uh, standing and we're here we just want to pray for you if you're maybe struggling and you want to say God strengthen fortify my faith in these last days I want to be ready when you come and before you come so that I can be on the witness stand for you I just want to pray for you that God will strengthen your faith today just come just where you are just want to ask God to strengthen your faith just come praise be to God God, if you just want to say, Lord, I want to recommit to you in the house of God, the house of prayer for all people. Lord, I realize the times we're living in, the tests like Daniel will come to every soul to stand for our faith, to stand when we seem, when there seems to be no one else standing and we seem all alone, but yet with you and God, you are the majority. Somebody wants to take a stand today. Say, Lord, fortify my faith. Not only give me saving faith, but give me enduring faith. And open my eyes to see the other side of the miracle. Just come. The Holy Spirit bids you come. To the house of prayer, God wants to strengthen. God wants to seal your decision for time and for eternity. Give God your heart and your hands. Praise God. Praise God. We're getting ready to pray right now. And if there's anyone else within the hearing of not my voice, but the voice of the Spirit of the living God, He bids you come and He empowers you through the Holy Spirit to stand boldly for your God and my God. Is this I know when you stand for God, 
you will always stand for you. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on God. Because he won't give up never, on you. Never, never will he give up on you. Never. What a God. What a God. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Thank God. Spirit of the living God, we thank you for the sweet songs of Zion. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us this day. Make us, break us, mold us, make us new again, O oh Lord, in you. Sometimes in order to be stronger, Lord, you have to break us. That's what you do for our faith. We realize, Lord, that the greatest things oftentimes have to go through pain and a process. Like the olive that has to be pressed. Like the grape that has to be pressed. And as they're pressed, oh God, their true potential is revealed because it is your power working in those things but even more so in our lives Lord when we are pressed you see what we cannot see because you are preparing us and making us stronger and better for tomorrow and for the rest of our lives so Lord I pray if anyone is ashamed of their faith today I ask that they will dismiss disabuse them of that faulty notion and thought and let them know that whatever they're going through all things uh, work together for good to them that love you to them that are called according to your purpose whatever we may go be going through hard as it may be and we feel like throwing in a towel may we remember your word that says what shall we then say if God be for us then who can be against us there are those who have come before the altar today of prayer. And I thank you for each one of them. And for those who are standing. But Lord, for those who have made the effort to come forward, there's something, oh Lord, that they want you to do for them. And by extension, everyone here in the house of God. They desire, oh Lord, for a closer walk and a deeper experience with you, the living God of heaven and earth. May you fortify their faith. May you help them, O oh Lord, to take a firm stand in whatever position and place you have put them in. Lord, some here are in positions of influence and they're tempted to compromise. But I pray that they will stand up for you, O oh God. Come what may, that they will not concede or compromise. Because when they stand up for you, you will stand up for them. And just like Daniel, you will enshroud them and encompass them with favor as a shield. So I pray, O oh God, that you will strengthen each one, O oh Lord, and seal our commitment this day and from this day forward for time and for eternity. Remember a special prayer request of your daughter, Roxanne. Lord, she's asked for prayer. Couldn't make it today, but we ask that you will remember her. Bless her just where she is, O oh God, and deliver from whatever she's going through. And I pray that you'll bless one and all. Bless every member. Bless every family. Bless every visitor in the house of God. Bless the leadership of the Ruth Church family. Bless the pastors and the elders, every ministry leader and director. And may Ruth be the beacon of light and hope, healing and health in this community to lift the name of the God of heaven higher till you come in your clouds of glory and reign righteousness forever and ever. But until then, may we be found faithful to you, O oh, our faithful God. For we ask it in the name of the Father, in the name of the only begotten Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, let every believing child of God say, Amen. 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 Faith is your victory. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Let's remain standing as we sing our benediction song. God be with you until the next appointed time. May he strengthen every tie that binds our hearts in Christian love.
until we meet. God be with you. God be with you until the next appointed time. May strength on every tie that binds our hearts in Christian love until. dismissed please stay if you wish for the after praise but please be dismissed please do not cross in front of the cameras for the after praise and if you're staying for prayer and fast please stay Don't
When I'm feeling helplessness around me Lift my head and close my eyes And remind myself what's true There's a God who loves us There's a God who hears us God who cares about the things that we are going Precious, hard to see, to find a way out. May I please, to all the questions offer you the answers. Open up your heart and let it light up love shine through.